when people say stupid things to you. <laughs> I'm thinking about today. I have a clarinet sound uh, mix in the background. A guy's just playing his clarinet in his car. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Back to stupid things people say. Um, <clears throat> I was sitting here meditating at the ocean and I recalled this was like 15 or more years ago when uh, I had just gotten divorced. So I was doing like my photographing my second uh, wedding since being divorced. Probably number 702 weddings. I've photographed 724 weddings in my whole career. But anyway, this was uh, the second one I'd photographed since getting my divorce. Anyway, <laughs> the person I'm working for, the bride's mother, um, I don't know how she found out I got a divorce, but she said to me, wait for it. <laughs> I just read in some noted magazine <clears throat> that there's less than 10% chance that once you get divorced between the ages after the age of 45 that you're never going to find somebody again to marry. Thank you <laughs> for this revelation. It was completely depressing because at the time I actually was looking. Um <clears throat> And um, how I responded was, um, I, you know, I can't remember what I said, but the deeper significance, not so much what you say, but how things like that affect you, um, you have to consider the source of the stupid comment. You know, here she, well, and also uh, she's writing my check, <laughs> my big check. So I didn't want to offend her, but later on I thought, what, how, how would she know anything about it? She lives in a mansion in the best two blocks from Mark Zuckerberg before he moved in. Um, has been married a thousand years, doesn't have to work, let's note. Um, what would she know about any kind of... Um, struggle I might be having. Nothing. Zip. Zero. Nothing. Um, so you have to always consider the source. Um, another stupid thing uh, that immediately jumps to mind. I was leaving Chiang Mai, Thailand, and I was going out to dinner with a couple of colleagues, not really friends, um, but just sort of uh, other people in the uh, group that I was trying to learn internet marketing in. Um, and I, we went out to a restaurant for dinner last night in Chiang Mai. Uh, so they're driving me back to my apartment and this will be the last time we're going to see each other. And suddenly the woman from the front seat, she married a French guy, she's Thai, says, you must have been really beautiful when you were younger. Wow. <laughs> That's her parting shot to me. Um, and this was, what, nine years ago. I did respond to that immediately. I said, I still am. <laughs> I wanted her to know. I, but I, you know, I had to consider the source. Um... I don't know if she realized what a stupid thing that was to say to a woman because you don't ever tell them. You don't ever tell a woman, even if she's 150, she used to be pretty when she was younger. Don't ever do it. It's wrong. And it's mean. But um, considering the source of that stupid comment, I thought, um, well, she's never been to the USA. Maybe culturally she doesn't know that you don't say that to women. I mean, let's give her a wide berth. Um, but, you know, it did offend me. It's still nine years later. I'm like, how could someone be so stupid? Um, <clears throat> but sometimes, here's what I've been thinking lately. A lot of times when you consider the source of stupidity, 
you have to look at their lives and if they have a really comfortable life where they don't have to do anything and get out of their comfort zone that this is the kind of person that usually says at least looking back into my own history um they've gotten too comfortable and you know myself included when it's funny <laughs> when I was working a lot harder and making tons more money, um, I think my compassion gene was a bit lacking. Um, and, you know, it just kind of all fell, fell into, I gotta work, I gotta, I mean, I loved, I loved what I was doing. But you can get caught up in comfort, let me tell you, because that's not when you learn anything. So you have to really consider the source of stupidity from people whose uh, lives are not changing. They don't take big risks. They don't even work. <laughs> Somebody's paying for them. <laughs> so, you know, really, this is something that happens every single day. So I wanted to help people with that because I've had to help my own self with uh, stupid comments. And then, you know, let's bring up the other thing about what is success. Okay, in our world, success means a lot of money, a big car, you know, a lot of things that really don't matter to everybody. Um, you know, when I lived down the street from Steve Jobs, um, I'd see him walking around in his turtleneck, either in a meeting, usually in a walking meeting with somebody. And I remember thinking, wow, he's a, he's a multi-zillionaire and he wears a turtleneck. Now it's, you know, become apropos and de rigue <laughs> to do that. But he really started it. And so, um, you don't have to have a lot of flash to be successful um, or adhere to what our culture says success is, which is money, power, a cute young wife if you're a guy, um, if you're a girl, if you're a gal married to someone powerful. <laughs> um, and... It, it, well, possibly in your own right, your own business, but, you know, our ideals about what success is and wealth are kind of warped. Um, so you have to be careful about that. Don't let people define your happiness. If you're happy delivering pizzas and that works for you, then you're richer than somebody that hates what they do and makes more money. Um, honestly, oh, I'll tell you one last thing. I was in Brazil, um, and really getting to know local people. And there was this, um, artist who, um, my Brazilian friend who I was staying with, uh, knew, and she was kind of patron, uh, subsidizing him because his work was quite exceptional. Anyway, um. <laughs> Good morning, world. Um, I'm in a project, doing a project in my van, making privacy inserts, so there's foam core and fabric around. Um, so I remember him saying, well, I worked enough, and I made this amount of money, in Portuguese, of course, um, so I'm going to stop working right now. I thought, I've never heard anybody say that that they made enough money today and they're going to stop working and knock off. Um, and, you know, it wasn't much money. <laughs> I don't know, it was like 25 or 30 USD, not Brazilian money. But what I'm saying is that was his definition of success. Now, we don't have any right to go, oh, well, you should think this way and you should want to buy a big car and you know there's plenty of the people it, it's you know one of the things I love about being in Europe is that people don't feel like they even have to own a car I mean some people do but a lot of people don't and there isn't this quest to get this kind of car and be seen in it and all that I mean there's a lot of um 
<laughs> extra mileage that is uh, about car purchases. You know, because you're kind of defined by what kind of car. I did buy a new car once, uh, a Volkswagen VW Beetle. Um, and it was fun, but people did perceive me differently in that car. I could tell by the way they reacted. And it was just, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure I'll buy a new car again because if you're not paying cash, um, you end up paying a lot of interest and in those darn payments every month. I don't need it. Um, anyway, so I'm going to leave you with that. Consider the source when people say stupid things to you. Probably nine times out of ten, they don't realize that what they said is not intelligent whatsoever, no matter how many degrees they have, um, because they're not being empathetic. So consider that and you can walk away you don't have to continue the conversation you can just turn around lately i've been just smiling and walking away because <laughs> i don't need to be there so have a wonderful day and i'll see you in the next video thank you for all the likes subscribes and comments i really do enjoy it and i'm happy you're here on my channel so Enjoy every minute.